Hi everyone. Today we will see how can we save our model predictions into the spreadsheet dataset something like this which looks like a Google spreadsheet or an Excel. What happens when we deploy our model into the production or when we make it available for the users to try? Users are going to try on some inputs and our model is going to produce some uh, prediction for it. And we want to analyze that data. We want to see what kind of inputs uh, users are trying and how good our model is behaving. And when your product management team or your managers or your, even your clients wants to see that data, it's not always feasible to create database for that small thing and share those database credentials and all these things. So we need something simpler, which look like a Google spreadsheet where we can, you know, store those model predictions and also the user inputs. And that's what we're going to see today. We're going to use a call, something called Airtable. So Airtable is much more than spreadsheet database, but we're going to use its uh, uh, database or the, you know, table aspect of it. And it has a Python API which is like just four to five lines of code and we can you know store our model predictions here now one thing you might have seen this particular you know model or this interface earlier in videos also where we have made the toxic comment classifier using the transformer model so today's focus is not on that model rather the focus is on how can we store those prediction into the air table so we're going to use for that a python wrapper called you know air table python wrapper so we will install that thing but first let's go into the air table and create our table or database so in air table the convention is you can think of database as kind of a base so you click on a plus icon and you can create the base again creating account on air table is pretty easy you just go and log in with your google account and you know uh, you can create those base and table so let's create one base here i click on creating base here you could see the name of the base Click on it. We can change the name of the base. Let's call it, um, I will call it ML base. Okay. Once we have this base, then you have multiple tables here. Currently, there is one default table. We can change its name also. Let's call it maybe the predictions because that's what we're going to store. Okay. I call it at the predictions. Now, in this table, you have a couple of columns. By default, you have those four columns. So let's call, I'm just double clicking on this column. Let's call this column as an ID so that we can count number of predictions we made. And let's change its data type by clicking here. Let's make it auto increment. So I select auto number and just save. This way I rename this particular column and also change its data type. Similarly, I double click here and I'm going to call this thing as a let's say user input because that's we're going to store here. The whatever the text input user is providing that we're going to store and again by default it's already long text and whatever the file you can select you can see you can make it as a single line text or even you can make it as a checkbox we want actually a long text because it is going to be a comment that user are going to enter save it similarly this thing we will store the actual model prediction so let's call it as a prediction and for its time you could make it even integer or number but in our case, I'm storing as a yes or no or something why or no. So I will make it as a single line text, right? And just save it. And this fourth column, we don't need it. Let's delete this particular thing. Again, by default, you will see a couple of uh, rows already created. You can delete those rows uh, if you want. You can simply click on it and delete those rows. Now what we will do using Python, we will insert our model predictions here. So let's go back to our again a streamlit application. And let me open our streamlit application here. And this is the Python wrapper that we're going to use. Since it's a Python library, you can simply call, you know, pip install and install that particular thing. So let me install it. Okay, once we install that particular thing, then you can go to our streamlit application that what we had. It is the same application that what we have used earlier, which is nothing but here we are loading our transformer model in this place. This is place where we are taking input from the user, which is nothing but the text or a comment. And then once we have this thing, we're going to pass that input through the tokenizer. And finally, the tokenized input through our model, which does the prediction here. And we are simply displaying that prediction here. We're going to keep this case code same because we want to modify this code so that we can store our, uh, what I call, we can store our predictions into that spreadsheet database. So first thing we need to import the air table. So from air table, we import the air table and then it comes with this a function or a class called air table, which takes this information. 
which asks for the base ID. You might have remember we have created one base, which also asks for an API key so that we can authenticate ourselves and the table name that we're going to use. We have already given our table name as a prediction. So we need these two things, base ID and the API key. So if you go to the Airtable API, this is the link. If you go to your Airtable API and if you are already logged in, okay, you will end up that REST API interface. And here you could see your base, whatever the base you have. So the one we created is the ML bus. Let's click on this one. Once you click on this thing, all the API related stuff will come here. And you could see here, we also got our base ID. Let's copy that base ID because that's what we're going to need. So I'm going to put that base ID here. We also need an API key. So let's see where can we get that API key. On the right side, you could see there is a show API key bar here because down, I think um, they have the request, curl request or the JavaScript request. So let's click on a show API key so that we can see our key. And you could see here is the API key. Let's copy that API key also in our application. Now we have both the things. I think table name is prediction, which is correct. We can confirm once again. We can go to our error table and I think yeah, it is the predictions. Yeah, that is correct one. So that we don't need to change. So this is how we will get an error table table, which is nothing but the instance of error table. And it has some methods to insert or get the data. Once we have this error table insert, it's just the one line of code, which simply call at.insert, which take a dictionary. Where dictionary has a key value, where key is nothing but your error table, table column, which is nothing but user input and prediction. So if I go to error table again, you can see we have a user input as one of the column and the other column is the prediction. This is an auto increment, so we don't need to worry about it. And against that user input, we want to store the user input that we got from the streamlit uh, interface, right? So if you could remember our streamlit here, this is the user input that we are getting. So we want to store that user input against the user input column and the prediction column will be hold our prediction value. This is what we're going to store. So now we have everything, just nothing but you know two lines of code here and two lines of code here. So let's refresh this page. I think I have already run this application. So if you don't know how to run it, let me you know exit and we simply call it streamly run and the file name which is the app table.py. And it will start our server, right? So it has start our streamlit server. You can see first it is getting our model because our model is a transformer model. It is trying to download this thing, this one, and it will cache them for the subsequent uh, page refresh. Once we have that thing, then we can test our model. Okay, I think uh, it loaded. Let's try some comment. Uh, we are going to classify our comment as a toxic or you know non-toxic, something which we have already done. So let's try some comment here. Let's say if I want to try hell and let me analyze it and it says the prediction is equal to toxic. Okay, we got some error. What it's saying, the predictions it is not able to find. We got the 404 error. I think it is not able to find the table that we are searching for. So did we put correctly? This is the base ID and is spelling and all correct. Let's go here. This I think we have taken correctly, right? This SH, whatever is this saying? Yes, that is the base ID. API key also, I think we did it correctly. 9V something. Yeah, that is also correct. The table name could be issue. Let's go and check whether the table name is correct. It looks correct only. Not sure, let's uh, try this thing. Maybe here, here we have correcting. Let me, you know, copy paste here whether it's something. I think it's same. Let's try the, you know, same input again. Let's click on analyze. And I think this time we didn't get any error. So maybe that the table name was not correct. So let me go to the base and see, yeah, we could see the our one entry came here, right? Which is the toxic command. So let's try something else. And again, I use that same test sentence because that's only I could thought of. That was a good point. And let me click on analyze and it says it is non-toxic and you know, 
let's go to our base and we could say we have non-toxic comment this is good thing like here you can easily filter again you can click on filter add a condition maybe you want to add condition on prediction where prediction is you can call it let's say toxic and enter and you will only get the toxic rules right again you can remove that filter condition so it become easy for anyone you can share with someone if you click on share here you can type someone email and even they can come here collaborate with you they can write some comment analyze the data and we don't need to worry about creating the database and giving those access and all these things right so i find personally this is very useful since i do a freelancing a lot of time when i deploy this application for a client to test we need something where we could store those uh, data and even client can easily access it and by default i use this combination a streamlit application and air table where you know we can collaborate i hope you found this video useful i know it was a small video but quite useful i use it regularly you can check the other videos on my channel also and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe thank you